All right, guys, I want to go ahead and do a quick video here for you to show you how number two, the um, Powerball simulation, works on tech project number one. So we're going to want to open that program up in the stat sim folder. Make sure you have the 2016 or later folder. And there is a video on downloading that from Blackboard. So watch that if you don't have this. Remember, these programs are for a PC only. They will not work on a Mac. So I'm going to double click that. I'll see all the different files. I want the Powerball sim, so I will open that. If it, you've just downloaded this, it's possible you'll get a warning about running it because it was downloaded from an unknown author who would be me. And you'll have to decide if you trust me or not, but um, you can bypass that and run it. The first step um, that it says after opening that, well, actually it asks us a question. So let's look at the question first. It says, when playing the lottery, do you suspect that there are any allowed sets of numbers to be avoided, or is any pick just as good as another? When you get asked a question about uh, what you think about how this is going to go, answer that before you run the simulation. So let's pull up Google Docs. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Sorry about that. So let me pull up my report. So here's the report I had going from before. I had done the Kino draw already, now I'm moving on to 2A, and they asked me a question, so I'm going to go ahead and answer that. And you can say yes or no, I'll take either one of those answers, and then defend your answer. So what I'm asking you to think about is, does it really matter what you pick when you're playing the lottery? Could you pick anything? Or are there some numbers that you could pick, and maybe that would hurt your chances of winning because of the type of numbers you picked? I'm taking this to be your opinion. So you can say yes or no, but make sure you defend your answer there. And then I'm going to go on to the next part, which it's labeling as part B for me, though part B does not need any output in my document. So let's go ahead and go back to the stat sim. So we're pulling this up and part, part B says to enter your name. So put your name here. Don't type what I just did. Put your name right there and then do whatever it says next. It says click the quick pick button to choose five regular numbers in a Powerball. So I'm gonna come down here and click that and it'll fill these in. The other option is picking your own numbers and but we'll do that later. And then part C says click the play once button a few times to try your luck and see how you do. So I'm gonna play once. Here's the numbers that came up. None of them matched me so I won no money. And if you do that a few times, sorry, nothing matched and you won no money, is unfortunately a super common result in the lottery. Here I had one match number. What did I match? What did I get lucky with? The 53 matched, right? And what did I get for that? No money. So you need more matches to win money. Um, so that happens a lot. So you can keep clicking through that if it's interesting to you and look at it one at a time. Oh, I hit a Powerball. Okay. My Powerball number was two and that was the Powerball that came up. So I won $4. That's good news, but I've played 26 times and it costs $2 a time. So at this point, even though I've won four, I've invested 52 and I'm down $48 for an average loss per play of $1.85. I know that's a loss for two reasons. One, it's in parentheses and computers put negative numbers, which would be a loss in this case in parentheses. The other way I know it was a loss is because I just clicked the button a bunch of times and I lost almost every time except for this one. So you could kind of think it through or you could um, read what it says about the parentheses. And then it says to click automatic and let that run until you have played the lottery two and a half million times, which will cost you $5 million. Uh, who knows, maybe you'll get lucky and win, but if you're like me or like I expect to have happen here, that luck's probably not going to happen. Uh, for some reason, when I programmed this, I made it speed up over time for drama. So it'll actually get there a little sooner than it initially looks like. But we'll let that uh, we'll let that run. Let's see. Let me go ahead and start kind of looking forward at some other things. I may not have mentioned this to you earlier, but when you put your name in and then you start clicking other things, it locks your name in. So like you can't change this anymore. And it puts a time and date stamp on there, and I, I like to see that. Apparently, I did this on June 15th of 2016. So if it's the year 2027 and I haven't updated the video yet, sorry about that. 
All right, so it looks like we're done running. We've got our two and a half million plays, so we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Part D says, copy this window to memory by holding down the Alt key and pressing the Print Screen button. So um, sometimes people like to expand their window, and if I do this, you're, it's going to be weird because I don't have my whole window on the video. Um, but it creates a lot of extra gray space. So before you capture it, get it back down to its original normal size. Hold down the Alt key like you would the Shift key. And while you're holding that, go find the Print Screen button and press that. And holding Alt and pressing Print Screen is like um, copy of that window. And then if you pull back up your Google Doc where you're writing your report, uh, can I change that to a D? It doesn't seem like it wants to let me do that. If I press Enter, it starts with a new letter. So now I'll type the D because that's what letter this really is. And then I'll do Control V to paste. So let me scroll up so you can see that a little better because it all flashed by. Now this is a little frustrating. My graph is not on the same page as the label. So in order to fix that, um, there's a few things we could do. We could make this a little smaller. Make sure that if you're making it smaller, it's still readable. You got an old guy reading these. Don't make me get my glasses out. You can make this a little bit smaller. And yeah, there, that popped that back up. And now I'm going to try and make it as big as I can and still keep it on this page. Up, oh, disappeared, so a little bit smaller again. And still not going back. Still not going back. There we go. So I don't mind you making it smaller as long as it's still readable. So if you can easily read it, it's fine. If it's getting too small, the other option you could do, and I'm going to go ahead and show you that too. Go ahead and make this bigger again. Pop up here at part A and just press enter a bunch of times until you drive that letter D down onto the next page because it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a label D here if the output isn't there. So make sure the label and the graph stay together. If I press enter after the graph and then press enter again, it'll start a new line and I can try and answer question E. All right, so question E says the summary of all plays output shows the frequency for each type of win for these numbers. Add up the number of wins to find the total number of wins and then divide that total by the number of plays to calculate the winning percentage. I'm just going to talk you through that a little bit. Um, but you need to add all of these up, so 2 plus 92 plus 195 and so on. And then when you get that, um, I'm just going to make up a number there. You know, maybe that ends up being 83,614. I doubt it, right, because I'm just guessing. And then divided by the 2,500,000 and then write out whatever that is as a decimal. It, this is a relative frequency we're doing, so write it in decimal form with at least four decimal places. So again, I'm not going to do the calculation here, but maybe that's 0, 4, 1, 8 or something. Okay, And then you'd want to write equals and convert that to a percentage. I'm going to leave that work to you. And again, this number here is supposed to come from adding all these up. I just made it up instead of actually getting out my calculator. I want you to add it up. But this is like how much work you could show on that. And then just make sure you write the percentage, percentage answer. Um, part F asks you to locate and interpret the average loss per play. I'll go ahead and do that one for you. And then I'm going to cut off this video. So here is, there's an overall profit or loss and an average profit or loss. So we were asked for average. It's in parentheses. So it's a negative, which means we lost money. So I would say something, because it's an average, in my interpretation, I'd want to use that phrase. So I would say, on average, I lost. I wouldn't say the profit or loss was. I, I should interpret it. It's a negative, so I lost. I lost about $1.78 per play. And if you think about the lottery, you never buy a $2 ticket and get back 22 cents and you say I lost a dollar 78 you either get back nothing or you win a prize like the four dollar prize I won earlier so it's important that you have the phrase on average because there's not a single play where you lost a dollar 78 but after you're done with two and a half million it works out as if you had lost a dollar 78 per play so that's that on average is important to convey that message 
the project keeps going. It involves going back to the stat sim, clearing out these numbers, entering in new ones, ones that you might find silly, but that's the ones I'm asking you to do, and then playing again. I'm going to let you finish that off, but what you're ultimately going to do is compare your results from playing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the results that you got when you played the quick pick. And then you'll write that all up in your report. So your report will keep going. Um, it's a complete report, just one document for the whole thing. Uh, this doesn't matter too much, but you know, it's almost silly to start number two and do so little right there, right? So maybe it would have been better when I realized I was going to go to another page to just go ahead and move number two down to another page. I don't mind if two starts on the same page that one was on, but it's such a little amount, maybe it makes sense to keep it together. Maybe that's a little bit of a nicer looking report there, and then you could continue on from there. That's up to you. Um, but I do want you to make sure that when you have output, it has a label. If I wrote an answer, it should say that that's from problem two and that that's part A. If I put a graph into the report, it should say what letter told me to put that in there. I'm answering a question about the percentage of wins. What letter was that? So make sure that all the output is labeled. And then when you have all this done, you can go ahead and uh, print it out and turn it in. Uh, I have a little bit of time left for this video, so let me go ahead and show you one other thing that might be useful when you're working with a partner. If you've never used Google Docs before, one of the things that might be weird for you is like, how do I save? It says up here, all changes saved in Drive automatically. Every time you type something and make it different, it changes it. Make a quick note of the name, Tech Project One, and your last name, right? So then, if you go to your drive, you should be able to find that. It's alphabetical, and I have a ton of stuff in here, but there's the project I just did. If I right click on that, one of the options is Share. And if you click on Advanced, we're not going to do anything too advanced, but if you click on Advanced, it says right now it's private and only you can look at it. But if you change that and click on anyone with the link can look at it and then do save, then this link right here, you could copy that and email that to your partners and say, hey, can you, can you look over my report? And they'll be able to click on that link and see your report and they can even make some comments on there or maybe they could email them to you, but that's a good way to share documents. Remember that you're just looking at and commenting on other people's documents. You are not copying it or altering it to be your own. Um, but that's a good way to be able to share and have each other look at it. And it's not that hard to do. Just click done. But make sure you copy the link first. And then when you go to write the email, you can just paste that right in. That's what I do when I send you guys links. All right. I hope that was helpful.